let's get going on making this delicious applesauce. So you're gonna to wanna to wash your apples under cold water. Peel your apples if desired. I will not be peeling ours today. And you wanna cut your apples into quarters or slices, chunks, however. We're gonna be cooking them down so it's not terribly important on the exact cut that you make with them. I'm gonna be showing you a couple different ways that you can cut your apples if you've never cut apples like this before. Cut them down the center and then cut each half in half to make the quarters. And then we'll be removing the inside seeded area. And you can cut them into slices this way. I will be leaving the skin on ours, like I said, uh, as we prefer the peeling blended up into our applesauce for the maximum nutrition. In your pan, you want a little bit of water and I've put some lemon juice in here to prevent browning of the apples. You could also use fruit fresh if you have that. So I have a few apples in the pan now. You wanna make sure you add water, otherwise your apples will burn to the bottom of your pan. Okay, so here's another way you could cut your apples. Basically cutting around the core of the apple. Now, I save our apple cores because we make our own apple cider vinegar. So if you get a little core in there, you can just peel it out, cut it out. All right, so you can see here the apples have started to cook down and soften quite a bit. The skins on them, if you leave the skin on, it will lighten in color, and that's all perfectly normal. Now we're using a variety of apples today. You don't have to use any one kind. But to make about six pints of applesauce, you're gonna want about seven and a half to 10 and a half pounds of apples. You're gonna want some water and some sugar. The sugar is optional, but we find that the sugar really enhances the sweetness of the apples. And really you're not adding much. I'm going to tell you to add it to taste, but if you have a canning book to the seven and a half to ten and a half pounds of apples, it's going to tell you to add one and three quarters to two and a half cups of sugar. Again, you can do it to your taste. So I'm just stirring the apples and they will thicken as it cooks because it's going to start oozing out the applesauce. And I'm just adding a little bit more water. You can add the water to your preference as far as your consistency of your applesauce goes. So here I've got my pan pretty full and the apples are cooking down nicely. And then we will be using an immersion blender to puree this up. You could use a food mill or food strainer if you have that to um, get rid of the skins if you don't want skins in your applesauce but I would encourage you to try it it's delicious and it adds a lot of nutrition and good color to your applesauce this applesauce is on the thicker side again you could add a little bit more water if you want yours a little bit thinner The recipe will be in the description box below this video, so be sure to check that out for the correct measurements according to the Ball Blue Book canning book. So I'm just adding some sugar here, about two cups. 
This is a really large pot full of applesauce. Like I said earlier, the sugar is optional. You could leave it out, but we feel that it adds, enhances the sweetness of the apples. So we do add a little bit. Two cups of sugar to this big pot of applesauce really isn't a whole lot if you look at it that way. And voila, we have applesauce. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Mm, yummy, yummy. All right, now we're gonna be getting this jarred up. These are just clean pint mason jars. They're room temperature, they're not sterile or nothing fancy, just clean jars. You're gonna fill them to about half an inch of head space. Uh, no, no more than a quarter inch of head space per jar. Beautiful, huh? These will be water bath canned for 20 minutes. You will water bath can pint jars and quart jars of hot applesauce for 20 minutes each. Again, half inch to quarter inch headspace. Okay, now that I have them all filled, we're gonna wipe the rim of each jar just in case we got any applesauce on the rim that would prevent your lids from sealing. So I'm just using a damp washcloth here, I'm just cleaning the rim of the jar. Lids and bands applied fingertip tight. The lids and the bands are also room temperature. We have canned like this for 26 years very successfully. All right, here they are in the water bath canner. I am adding hot water. The applesauce is hot, so we don't want to put cold water on them. You want to add hot water, turn your burner on high, and cover your jars with the water by one to two inches. Burner was on high, lid was applied. It's at a rolling boil. When it's boiling like this, start your timer for 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes is up, turn your heat off and remove the lid. Wait for the boiling to die down. Let them sit in this hot water for 10 minutes before you remove them. That will prevent siphoning and any messy spillage. You don't want that. And then after that 10 minutes, get them out of the hot water. Set them on your countertop onto a towel. Let them cool down for 12 to 24 hours. And you just made yourself some delicious, wholesome, homemade applesauce. If you've never had homemade applesauce, you are missing out. And I hope you can make yourself some. But that's how you make homemade applesauce. Once they're cooled, I will remove the bands label them and take them down to our storage area. So far this year, we have made 84 pints of homemade applesauce for the pantry. We're not always guaranteed apples on our trees every year. We live in Indiana and our spring weather can be questionable sometimes and take out the blossoms on our fruit trees. So when we have apples, we tend to go a little bonkers preserving them, but that's okay because these will last many years as long as the lids are intact and there's no signs of spoilage. I would encourage you to make your own applesauce 
if you've never done so. It's really not that hard. Take care. Keep canon. Until the next video, may God bless you. Bye for now.